This is question time and unfortunately there's no walk, there's no top four questions today. Well, the main questions are about the ANC National Policy Conference and if indeed you've got any of those questions, please do tweet us. Use my Twitter handle at Mpo Tzedu, and then you'll be able to get through and we'll be able to read your comment or your question. Today, we're still coming to you live from Nazrek. This is where the ANC is holding its fifth uh, national policy conference. And uh, my guest today, chairperson of the ANC in Limpopo, Chupu Sten Matabat. And um, he's, of course, joined by uh, Professor Kibisi Tirchan. He is a lecturer, a political analyst, many things, an author, and all those. Today he's going to be analyzing with us live, with your participation, of course, the National Policy Conference of the ANC. Gentlemen, let me welcome you uh, to the show. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, Le yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you are sitting in a very uh, interesting commission, um, economic transformation. Let's just talk uh, briefly about that. Um, and I was saying even yesterday that uh, I, I sense there's some agency on the part of um, the ANC on uh, economic transformation. Definitely there is. Hence you hear even the type of um, language that uh, people are bringing into the picture this nowadays. Mm. Yeah, um, uh, on land, the issues on land, I think you have heard a number of views on land. Some saying uh, perhaps we need to come up with a, a expropriation without compensation. Some people are saying no, that we don't think that is the right uh, route to take. Um, you, you also have a question of uh, monopoly capital, yeah. which, is, uh, a, which was a very topical issue in, the, in, in, in all the commissions, I'm told. But in our situation, indeed, whether uh, you do have a concept called white monopoly capital or you just have monopoly capital. Okay. Those were the issues that were deliberated. And once people talk of monopoly, remember the essence of our revolution. It was a, a, a struggle against monopoly capital. Yeah. That is uh, the content of our revolution currently. So basically, hence you spoke of the fundamental contradictions in the revolution. Yeah. So if you talk, you hear people starting to confront that issue, it, it therefore implies that there is indeed agency. Okay, let me just remind our viewers there at home that um, we may have to interrupt our program today because of a press briefing which is supposed to be held uh, right here uh, from Nasrec, uh, briefing from commissions and all that. And I think today's one um, should be addressed by Joel Nechitenj. Um, but uh, for now, we continue with our program. And uh, please do call us. Uh, the numbers uh, should be on your screen there. We will be able to take your call even from here at Nasrec. Uh, do tweet us at and uh, we should be able to take your tweets. Prof, let me um, just uh, come to you. Um, I, I think when we came here, um, economic, uh, radical economic transformation was buzzing. Do you find that it has been um, handled with the same respect and, and zest and zeal as uh, it, it were leading to the conference? Well, ANC conferences are always preceded by radical talk, radical rhetoric. NGC in 2010 was preceded by nationalization. And uh, at the end of which you had a new term, strategic intervention. Mm -hmm. uh, the ANC's default position is always to go for the middle path because it's a multi-class organization. Every constituency in the ANC must see themselves in the ANC resolutions. That's how the ANC keeps itself intact. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt. I haven't seen, I was not part of the commissions, but I, I'm quite certain that you will have uh, the normal ANC middle of the ground position. Uh, what exactly they will term it, I don't know. But also because, I mean, we, we know that 2012 decided that you needed to have accelerated economic transformation. And one of the issues there that was raised is that you need to have beneficiation of all these minerals that we have. We impose a cap on strategic minerals, limit the amount of exports so that most of those products are beneficiated locally. Mm -hmm. And there was meant to be a legislation to do exactly that. We haven't seen that. So my sense, my hunch would be if I were a betting man, I would say they would come back saying you need to introduce legislation to 
bring into life resolutions of Mangao. Okay, let's take N. N, you are in Durban. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Can I, can I put a few questions go ahead. about the ANC? Now, the ANC got in fair and square in 2014. Right, now they want to have a vote of no confidence in the president on August the 8th. Now, why don't they, to me, oh gosh, it repeat, repeats on yourself here. Um, why don't they have the vote of no confidence in secret? Right, okay. And I'm getting lost now. I'm watching myself on, or watching TV. Um, okay, that's fine. And we got your question. Let's, let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. We've got your question. Um, the, the, the vote of no confidence, I think it's one of the issues. It's not a policy matter, I suppose, but uh, it's something that I'm not so sure if uh, it has been um, ignored or rather not entertained. No, no. As the African National Congress, we are, our position is very clear, is that uh, whether is it is in confidence in secret or is public the fact of the matter is that uh, we've got uh, organizational position mm -hmm. and the organizational position must re must be respe respected because our uh, elect electoral system is not that uh, of uh, the likes of the west minister system or whatever it's actually proportional representative mm -hmm. uh, representation which uh, says when you go to parliament you go on a ticket of a, a particular political party. In this instance, it will be the African National Congress. So if the African National Congress says we need to vote uh, for the removal of the president, we'll do that. But we won't need parliament to do that. Okay. Uh, the ANC will, do, will follow its own uh, internal structure. But uh, we, we don't envisage a situation where the opposition will then tell us to vote for, 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 uh, for the removal of our president. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone in the ANC will support that because uh, uh, we've got a political line. Okay, let's and that take, is our president. Let, let me take uh, Francis. Francis, you are in Limpopo. Welcome. Good, mo good evening. I would like to ask the, the Premier of the Limpopo the, about the um, land that has been given to people in Limpopo. Can you please give us some um, example of where it has worked. We're looking at the tea plantations. We're looking at many mango farms that are not operating anymore. What is the point if there's no um, use for this land? Just to have it in somebody's name is absolutely useless. There's no land in the Mpoko that's um, productive. Could you please give us an example of something that's productive? Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Francis. Uh, Obviously, um, that is the essence of this conference currently. When we when we talk of a radical economic transformation, we are talking about things such as that. Because the other thing that we we, we the diagnostic report was was we discussed when we discussed the diagnostic report was the issue of the land that has already been transferred to Africans to blacks, mm. which which was uh, actually a breadbasket at, at some stage. It was commercial land and it was productive at some stage, but now that it has been transferred to uh, uh, the rightful owners, it's no longer that productive. People are doing one, two, three on it, which, is, which, 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 uh, which may, made it to, to lose productivity. What we are saying now is that how do we approach, how do we ratify those mistakes okay. as, 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 as government? And it cannot be true that all of them are not productive. We know that there are those that are you, 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 you certainly should know that there is a land in Bembe where young people, uh, uh, it's, it's an agricultural yes, land. Yes, in fact, it, it has been made, more, it's actually even import, exporting mm -hmm. to, the, to the outside world. 
it has even been made more productive than it was before when it was still under white hands. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll get uh, some views from uh, Dr. Zechana here. Um, he's our political analyst and associate professor from the University of Johannesburg. There. But for now, we're taking a quick break. When we return, we'll be taking your calls as well and taking your tweets. Tweet us at Mpo Tzedu. That should be your Twitter handle for today. And indeed, we're coming to you live from Nazrek. Looks like joy came early this July. Buy four red codes to share. Enter your codes and get 10 Rand airtime guaranteed with up to 100,000 Rand airtime every day for the month of July. Celebrate Christmas joy with red this July. Marco. Polo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks earlier. Gentlemen, welcome to our pub. Castle. Share a castle, make some new friends. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. We're coming to you live from NASREC at the ANC's National Policy Conference. And we're talking various issues that have been happening right here at uh, the ANC Policy Conference. Wiseman, you are in PE. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, Bo, and good afternoon to your guest today. You know, Bo, <laughs> I'm watching you now. you saying uh, before this National Policy Conference of the ANC, the, the radical economic transformation was buzzing and then I laughed out loud because I said I, I said to myself, it seems like you don't understand ANC. You know, but ANC, they are like that. They always playing with people's minds. Those people, they are not radical. They were never radical. The, 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 the reason uh, uh, the Nelson Mandela's were out of prison and the, the, the government is is because of the communities in South Africa. Those people, they were never radical. The first radical to, to do for them, if, if they want to prove that they are radical, they, they must recall Jacob Zuma. Those people, in board, they, 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 they are useless. Man. They were never radical. I don't even remember one thing that was radical, radical thing that was done by ANC. Those people are useless. Thank you. Wise. Thanks very much. <laughs> well, I expected that from Wiseman. He is that <laughs> type of person. <laughs> Prof, let, let's talk about this, uh, the, the, I mean, the land reform yeah. and, um, you know, other uh, um, uh, what programs which we expect really to come out of this conference. I know it will be recommendations for, uh, for the national conference in December. Yes, you see, land reforms, uh, it is an issue that is becoming quite urgent, uh, especially not only in the rural areas, but in the urban areas as well, uh, because municipalities need to buy land to construct houses, uh, you have massive urbanization. That is why you have um, strikes or other protests because mm -hmm. people need housing. Mm -hmm. And in some municipalities, there's just no land uh, to build these houses on. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, also, I think it was 2007 or 2012 that came up with a resolution to promote food security. Mm -hmm. uh, if there are any major weaknesses or disappointments really in the last five years or so, it's failure to promote rural production. Uh, because in that way, if you are able to do that, then you arrest urbanization, right? Because people can live productively in the urban areas. Um, so you will have uh, more emphasis on that. Um, the other issue, though, that I thought I should uh, uh, comment on is the issue raised by the lady about recalling uh, President Zuma or vote of no confidence. This is where I think you see is a major indictment on the ANC, where you see individual interest being prioritized over organizational integrity. Mm. Um, the one point that is not emphasized in the organizational renewal document, for instance, there's just one mention of the integrity commission. The integrity commission was meant to promote 
election of uh, credible leaders mm -hmm. and where leaders uh, go wrong they are recalled you have to step down even before you go to court yes. right and 2015 ngc decided that recommendations by the commission would be binding they would be final instead of having the nec approve them and you hardly have uh, you don't hear of that in fact as we know now uh, the commission is sitting on a report about the president of the republic where apparently they say he must be recalled because obviously he has done all manner of wrong things, you know, uh, harming the integrity of the organization. But you hardly hear anything of that. So you, you, you have selective application of, of rules. That's, that's where the ANC is. If some people are punished, others are let, are let free. Chamano, you are in Limpopo. Welcome. Hello? Welcome. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, the question is, I would like to know what, what are the delegates saying about this Uza Bazaar, which is dividing our nation? Uza Bazaar, what are the delegates saying about it? What are the delegates saying about Uza Bazaar? What about, uh, what are they saying about what? Uza Bazaar, Uza Bazaar. Which is given to the Steve. Steve. Uza Rujaka. Hello. Are you talking about Funza Rushaka, Chaman? Yeah. What, Chaman, what are okay, the delegates saying? Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. yeah. what are the delegates saying about the Funza Bazaar? What are the delegates saying about the Funza Bazaar? Okay, oh. that's fine. I've got your point. Yeah, Funza Rushaka. Um, I think, yeah, that's what Chaman wants to know. Yeah, on, on education, uh, I think not just, um, I don't know if Chaman maybe has some particular issues to mm. raise about um, mm. uh, edu Finalism. education, but mm. uh, 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 broadly, I guess that's uh, something that we would have to uh, entertain. But I just want to go to our tweets. Um, uh, uh, James um, uh, Pan, oh, Pan Pan Vuisile. Ask the Premier, why are they not tackling the issue of the Guptas head-on? Okay. Uh, please ask the Tabata why all of a sudden the agency on this so-called radical economic transformation and um, some fool you are, uh, says, why not talk um, import substitutes? Why not invest heavily on farmer support? Why not add value to minerals? Radical economic transformation. Um, Okay, they have our attention now, says Mon, uh, Monldi, uh, Volmaster. Okay, they have our attention now. What is the next step for radical economic transformation? No, no, it's, it's not out of a sudden that we are talking about radical economic uh, transformation. We started talking about radical economic transformation on our route towards Mangau. Uh, at Mangaung, it came out as a resolution of the African National Congress. Mm. And uh, we have always been talking about that. Remember, uh, Mpo, dealing with societal measures, ma matters is not uh, something that you, you just implement as if it's an event that can be. You, you know, you, you just uh, uh, put in a magic wand and everything happens. It's a societal issue. It's a process. Uh, you need to set up structures, you need to set up uh, a, a number of uh, other issues that, uh, uh, variables that uh, influences the, that kind of uh, radical economic transformation. Currently, what is being debated is the naming of the entire process. Whether uh, it's correct to call it radical economic uh, transformation or we can just uh, define, is, uh, define it as uh, inclusive growth, a policy that uh, encourages inclusive growth, you know, okay. where you include those who are left out and all, all those kind of things. Okay, hold it there. Let's take Justice. Justice, uh, you are in 20. Yes, uh, you're speaking to Justice here. I'm from the Otis in 20. Uh, rest and Matavata. Generally, I've got only one question for you. Uh, and that is regarding the law of ANC. ANC says, as our cater, when we send you to the parliament, you must abide by the uh, constitution of South Africa, not of the ANC. Remember, we are sending you there as our cater. So now, if they are saying uh, those people who are in the government, uh, in the parliament, they must now abide by ANC constitution uh, and forgetting about the countries were, what is he saying? So there I find ANC to contradict uh, itself. And again, where is the freedom 
uh, of the people when they say you, you, we, are, we are choosing for you, you must then vote against the, 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 the president. Otherwise, we'll uh, take you out. That, to me, is a violation of rights. Uh, Prof, I'll have to agree with you when you say uh, ANC, they have selective uh, method and uh, when we're coming to, to, to their rules, whereby they will follow some and sometimes they don't, you know, don't choose what to follow and what not to follow. That's all. Thanks. Okay, thanks very much, Justice. Justice, there is nothing called the law of the ANC. There is only the law of the country. <laughs> there is only the law of the country. But of course you've got the constitution of the ANC. But we are saying that uh, the constitution of the country, the supreme law of the country, states that people will go into parliament holding the mandate of their individual parties. I don't think it's only the ANC that has uh, that, that kind of policy, that if you are elected on the mandate and ticket of the African National Congress, then you must toe the line. So what is going to happen uh, in, the oh. uh, in terms of uh, the deployees of the ANC from Limpopo, those who do not vote uh, in accordance with um, uh, this party line? Um, I know Pumalanga have said they will be recalled. Um, what is what 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 is Limpopo's position? No, obviously that will labor border around issues of ill discipline. Okay. They will be taken through disciplinary processes, and then uh, the remedies uh, out after the sanction, the remedies that will will be deployed by the or or, or uh, executed by the okay. deployed uh, deployed by the the the. the, the the okay. dipl disciplinary com committee will definitely be executed by us as the executive of the province. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, before we take Jan, uh, Prof, there's a uh, tweet here. Um, MacIver says, uh, can you ask Prof to speak positive uh, with our movement? We are tired of negative things. But he's got a BLF uh, logo uh, on, on his handle, so I don't know which <laughs> movement he's referring to. Jan, you are in Hamas craft. Hello. Hello. I yes, just want to ask uh, the professor one question. Professor, do you have a problem with President Zuma or the ANC? Because every time when you comment, you are always negative about the ANC. You don't see anything good about the, 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 the ANC, nor the president. Thank you. All right, thanks, John. Oh, well, then John agrees with MacGyver then. Mm. So the BLF and uh, mm. the ANC, yeah. No, the ANC is a wonderful movement. <laughs> I'm a nationalist intellectual after all, so my sympathies lie there. Uh, but then if the truth has to be spoken, it must be spoken. Uh, you need not tell lies and claim easy victories. Um, but I think I should disagree somewhat uh, with the Premier here, um, that uh, members of the ANC swear allegiance to the Constitution as well, not to the party. Mm -hmm. um, if the party has become an impediment to the advancement of national interests, then we cannot prioritize the party. We know what happened with Nkandla, for instance, where the party uh, would not hold accountable the president on the Nkandla issue, to a point where parliament um, violated its own responsibility to hold the executive accountable. Um, so the issue of the party, that the party comes first, it's, 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 it's highly incorrect because parties are simply instruments of transformation. They come and go. They exist to the extent that they remain relevant to society at that time. Um, so we, 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 the main issue, after all, we are patriots. We are not party apparatchiks. We are patriots. The country comes first. So the idea that the party should, should, should prevail, I think, is highly incorrect. Okay. Tabi, yeah, so Ed Jeritava says, I must ask you, in our area in Steel Ports, Kukun, mm. so poor, yet we have so many mines. Where is the 26% of mining charter uh, uh, going? Well, that's, that's one. And uh, Spencer, uh, AP Spencer says, the Premier is not answering the question. Why don't you deal with the Guptas head on? Please, those two <laughs> questions. 
maybe before we go there, I think I, I need to correct this, uh, this assertion that the professor is making. We are not saying the party comes before the country. We, the constitution definitely comes. If there, there can be a law or perhaps uh, one court can decide that uh, President Zuma must go, the ANC will, will recall President Zuma because we respect the law and the law comes first. But we are saying when people go to parliament, they hold a particular mandate and they must respect that for as long as that mandate is not illegal, then or rather illegit illegitimate, mm. then that mandate must be up upheld by the, the party deployees. And, and that is political democracy, I think. Uh, and it happens everywhere in the world, not only in South Africa. But uh, coming back to that question, the question that uh, uh, you, you are raising on, on the mine, why is the 26%? Uh, that is exactly what we are discussing today. You know, when the prof was speaking, it was as if he was in one of the commissions. You know, because most of these issues that are being, are being raised by, 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 by people here, the things that uh, the communities are saying, mm -hmm. you are slow on this matter. That is exactly what the delegates are also saying. Okay. You are, you are, you are, you are not moving with the right, at the right pace on this matter. That is what the delegates are saying. We have run out of time, mm -hmm. uh, but, but the Gupta's uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> the diagnostic report of the SG points out clearly that uh, we need, the, it, it is no longer perception now, okay. you know, that the Guptas are a problem. Uh, to, the, to, 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 to the image of the African National Congress, whether real or, 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 uh, or not real, you know, it's now a fact that uh, um, it's, it's, it's out there in public. It dents the image of the African National Congress. So as this collective, we must come out clearly and say, how do we rectify this situation, you know? Whether wrong or right, how do we rectify it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, indeed, uh, time has run out. And Puka Ramsheng was asking, ask the chair, why is ANC Limpopo always supporting other provinces' pronounced candidates but fails to put one from our own to form part? You'll answer that one to me. I'll respond uh, to Puka Ramsheng. We're not, there. We're not supporting well, any other candidate <laughs> now. <laughs> Puka, um, they will respond. But that was question time. We're coming to you live uh, from uh, Nazarak here. And, um, well, the press briefing that we had expected would interrupt our program has not yet started and um, actually my colleagues have uh, trickled out I don't know if it is going to to happen but it probably will continue later but uh, please don't uh, change that dial keep on watching SABC news and for me and the entire crew here we really thank you I have a hot